I will now talk about uh, the, a very important problem defined on weighted graphs that's known as the single source, the single source, shortest paths problem, shortest paths problem. Okay, and in this problem, in this problem, what we are given is a weighted graph, weighted graph G, V, E, W. W is the weights on the edges here. And I will assume that the weight of every edge is non-negative for every edge. And also a start node. This is where the single source comes from and the source node. I in V. And what the output is, is the distance from I to each node J, to each node J and V. And we denote this by D of J. So D of J could be a mapping that the value of DJ is the distance from, from node I to node J. And not just the distance, but the shortest path, the shortest path. And should not be the, it should be a shortest path because it might not be unique. A shortest path from I to J, okay? It's given by P of J, and we will see how that's defined. P of J will be the parent of J. So what is the parent of J on such a short path? It will be the node from which we arrived to J when we went from I all the way to J. Okay, so this is what the problem is. We are given a, a weighted graph. We assume the weights are non-negative and a node I that we call the source. And I'm interested in finding from that node I to every other node, what's the distance? Okay, remember the distance is the shortest, the, it's the weight of the shortest path. Shortest path is a path such that the sum of the weights on that path is minimum. Okay, the sum of the weights on that path is minimum over all possible paths. So <clears throat> for this problem, we have a very famous algorithm that's known as Dijkstra's algorithm. Dijkstra's algorithm. And it is a greedy algorithm and work, works in a very simple way. You start from your source node I, and then you start visiting every other node. As you visit a node, you update the distance because now when I visit a node, I keep track of the weight of the edges on the path to that node. And every time I reach a node, I say, is the length of the path that I arrived at that node with shorter than whatever distance was stored in that node? If it is, I update it. I, I will first illustrate it with an example, a simple example, and then we will write the pseudocode and analyze its running time. Suppose we have this graph, we have a graph with, let's say, five nodes. Let me, something like this. And I will assume the graph is undirected, but the graph could be directed as well, and Dijkstra's algorithm would work on directed graphs as well. Okay, so suppose I have this graph here, and this is node zero, node one, node two, node three, node four, the weight of this edge is three, of this is seven, of this is two, four, let's say five, say six, and let's say four. And suppose that now I will start looking at it. Suppose this is my node I. <clears throat> the way the algorithm works is by, we are gonna have D of J for every node J, and we will have P of J for every node J. And we will start visiting all the nodes of this graph from this node i. So the first thing we say is that we know that di, for node i, the distance from, from the node to itself is zero. We know this part, right? And we know that the parent of i, we don't need any parent there, so we can set this to null or nil, okay? Because this is the, the source node. We are not gonna be arriving at it from anywhere. We're starting from there. So the distance from node i to itself is zero. The, dis the, the parent of node i is null. Then we initialize for all other nodes. 
so here I so this is not I this is d of zero and this is p of zero here. Then we say d of one, sorry, d of one equal d of two equal d of three equal d of four, and all of these are going to be infinity, okay? Infinity. Because the distance to these nodes so far is infinite. We have not been able to reach them. And the parent for all of them as well, p1 equal p2 equal p3 equal p4 is null. Okay, because we have not been able to, to reach there. Now, at the same time, I'm going to initialize a set that will have the all the nodes I will it will have all the nodes that that we have not determined their their um, their distance yet and I will include the source node in it here so it's going to be all the nodes this set here we will see later that this is where I want to represent this set by a, a min heap so that I can find the node there with the smallest distance in O of 1 okay so then the, the algorithm works as follows I start from node i and then I will actually look at the set X. I'll say, give me the node from so set X that has the smallest value D. When we start, the only node that has the smallest value D is, is node zero because D of zero is zero. D of J for every other J is infinite. So this is why we would start from this node I, which is zero in this case. Then the, the way we work is as follows. I will look at all neighbors of, of this node I. So let's look at all neighbors. The neighbors of, of zero here would be node one and node three. And I, for each one of them, I will do the, the following check. I, so if, if I denote by this as the, the neighbor as h, node h, I will ask the following question. I will say if d of this node zero, so I will look, let's say, let's look at node j h when it is one. I will say if d zero, plus the weight of the edge from, from 0 to 1, 0 to 1, is smaller than the d of 1, then I will set d1 to be d of 0 plus weight of 0, 1. So what's happening here? I am saying the d node 1 already has its own distance. Remember that from initialization it is infinite. And I'm saying is that now I can reach node one from node zero. So if the distance to node zero, which is D zero, plus that the weight of that additional edge that's gonna take me from zero to one, which is three in this case, is smaller than D one, then let's update D one because there's, we have a new path whose length is shorter. So in this case, D zero is zero plus three. It is smaller than infinity. So now we, be, we have d1 becomes 3, okay? So d1 becomes 3. We do the same thing with, with node 3. When I look at neighbor as node 3, and I say if d0 plus the weight of 0, 3 is smaller than d3, then we update, right? Then d3 becomes d0 plus the weight of the edge from 0 to 3. And indeed, in this case, of course, that we have the d0 zero is 0, plus the weight of 0, 3 is 7, it is smaller than infinity, then d3 becomes 7, right? So now I have the, I have the, I can update them here. So now we have d of 1 becomes 3, and the parent of 1 becomes 0. And we have d of 3 becomes 7, and the parent of three is zero, right? Because the parent is the node from which we came along that shortest path. Now we are done with this. Node zero is done. I can put a check mark next to zero. I say, I know node zero has been done. Now what happened here? Remember this node X, sorry, set X had the, the nodes and its distance, each node has its distance. So the next, <clears throat> the next step, I will say, give me the node, a node, j in the set x that has the smallest value of d. Now, keep in mind that at this point, the distance d of 2 and d of 4 are still infinite. d of 1 is 3, d of 3 is 7. So if I look at set x, 
and I say, give me the node that has the smallest distance, the smallest value, it will be node one. So now after this, we go to node one. And let me erase this here. And we go to node one. So now my, my next node that I'm looking at is node one. So this is node one here. And now I will repeat the same exercise. I will look at every neighbor of node one and I will update their distances. So let me actually use a different color now. Uh, let's use this orange here. So the neighbors of node one, the, the neighbors is, can be H could be two and H could be three, right? So when I look at node two, I'm asking is D of, D of one plus the weight of one two now smaller than D two? The answer is yes, because D one is three plus the weight of one, two is four. This is seven, it is smaller than infinity. So we make this D two, seven. And P of two now becomes node one. The parent of two is node one. Now notice what's gonna happen to the other node now. Node three, we ask, is the distance, the distance to one plus the weight of that edge that takes me from one to three smaller than D three? Now, D of 1 is 3. The weight of the edge from 1 to 3 is 2. Is it smaller than D3, which is 7? The answer is yes. 5 is smaller than 7. So now notice what happened. That the Dijkstra's algorithm is telling me that this path that went from 0 to 1 to 3 is shorter than the length of the path that went directly from 0 to 3, which is 7. So now I update D3 becomes 5. And I update the parent, it's no longer zero. The parent of three is now node one, okay? Once I'm done with this, we say node one is also done. So now the distance to three, the distance to one is three, the parent of one is zero, we are done with that. Now I go to set X. Set X now is going to have in it the nodes two, three, and four. The distance to four, it's still infinity. The distance to three is five. The distance to 2 is 7. So if I say, give me from set X the node that has the smallest uh, distance, in this case it's 5, it's going to be node 3. So now I look at node 3, and I look at it all its parents. Now, if I use uh, the green here, if I look at 3, the parents, sorry, the neighbors are nodes that we have not put a check mark on. So I don't care that 0 and 1 are neighbors now. 0 and 1 are done. So now I say, give me the neighbors of three that we are not done with. So the neighbors of three that we are not done with are two and four. I do the same exercise. If I look at node two, D3 plus the weight of that edge from three to two, it's five plus five, it's 10. And D of two, it's seven. 10 is not smaller than seven, so I don't change anything here, right? I look at from going from three to four. The, the path that takes me from 3 to 4 will have weight of D3 plus the weight of the edge from 3 to 4. That will be 5 plus 4, it's 9. 9, but D4 was infinity. So now D4 is 9, it makes sense. And P of 4 is 3, right? So now I am done with node 3 as well. We say we are done with node 3. And... Now I go to, to X. X is going now to have only nodes two and four. And the distance uh, to D2 is seven. The distance to four is nine. So this is seven plus and uh, nine. So I say, give me the node from X that has the smallest distance. It's node two. I look at node two. The node two, I look at its neighbors. And the only neighbor that has we are not done with is four. But D2 plus the weight of the edge from two to four, it is seven plus six, that's 13. D4, it's nine, nine is smaller than 13, then I don't change anything. And then the algorithm is done. So now by the time I am done with this, by the time I'm done with all this, we find that this will be the, the distances that when we are done, so D of zero will be zero and the parent of zero will be null. And the D of one is going to be three and the parent of one is going to be zero, node zero. 
If I look at D of 2, it's going to be 7, and the parent of 2, it's 1. And D of 3, it's 5, and the parent of 3 is 1. And D of 4 is 9, and the parent of 4 is 3. So if I now draw, I want to draw the graph again. So if I draw it like this here. Something like this. And we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then what we really have, if you look at the paths from 0 to all other ones, from 0, for node 1, the parent is 3. For node 1, the parent is 3. So it's coming from here. For node 2, the parent is 1. Sorry. For node, node 2, the parent is 1. We came from here. And for, for node 1, the parent is 0. And for node, for node 3, we said node 2, the parent is 1. For node 3, the parent is 1. And for node 4, the parent is 3. It's this. So if you look at this, now we have the distance from 0 to every other node. This is the D values here. And if you ask me about the shortest path from 0 to 4, just follow these red arrows, which denote what these P values are. So the shortest, uh, shortest path from 0 to 4 is 0 to 1, 1 to 3, 3 to 4. Shortest path from 0 to 2, <clears throat> it's 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and so on. Okay? If you look at the red arrows, what they form is a tree, actually. The tree will be rooted at node 0, which is the source node. And this is how Dijkstra's algorithm works. Actually, it will generate for a, for a connected graph. The, if you look at the red arrows at the end, or this P pointer is the, the parent, you will notice that the four is a tree there. Okay? So this is how the algorithm works. I will quickly try to write the, the pseudocode here so that we try to analyze its running time. So if we look at it, Again, I'm not going to write that the name of the algorithm is Dijkstra. The input, we know it's a weighted graph. Weights are non-negative source node i. Then we want the shortest paths. So the way the algorithm would work is that we will initialize this set x to the empty set. This is the set of the nodes whose distances have not been computed yet. Then I need to do the initialization for each j in v. I will do the following. I will say d of j is infinity, and I will say the parent of j is null, and I will put that node in set uh, x. Okay. Then the next thing I will say, so that I know what what is the start node the next time, I will say that d of, of i is 0. Okay, and the p of i is still, the p of i is still null. I don't need to do anything on it because we have done it already there. Okay, so d of i is, is 0. Then I will say while x is not empty, so there are still nodes whose distance we have not calculated yet, I will say let k be the node, be a node. Notice that when I use a here, I mean that the no that node might not be unique, in which case just choose a node that has the minimum value dk. Let dk be a node with the minimum with the minimum value of d. Okay? In x, right? And then I will say if just this is just a boundary check here, if dk equals infinity, then break, we are done. And it's important to think about this, what this is saying here, if the node whose smallest distance is infinity, we are done. What does this mean? That all the nodes that are left in set X have distance infinity, which means the graph is disconnected. I cannot reach these nodes from I, you can break and, and exit from here. Otherwise, if it's not, we get that node out of X. So we say x 
is x minus k. So we, we remove it from the set. And then we look at every neighbor of that. For each neighbor, for each neighbor h of k, we, for each neighbor h of k in, in x, we do in x, okay? So note, neighbors that we have been done with, we don't consider them anymore, okay? If d, as we said, if d of k plus the weight from k to h is smaller than d of h, then we set d of h to d of k plus weight of k and h. And we set the parent, we said the parent of, of h is now k because we came to h from k. And then at the end of this algorithm here, we return both mappings p, so let's actually d first, d and p. Okay, so we return the mapping of the distances. So what's the distance to every node? And we return that p mapping that tells us for every node what's the parent. So this is the, the algorithm, and let's look at the running time analysis here, worst case. And let's assume that the number of nodes is n, and the number of edges is m, okay? So this is, we can look at these lines here. This is O of 1, this line here, this is O of 1. It's just initializing a set. Then we need to do, for every node, we have to... We have to initialize d of j, we have to analyze p of j, we have to add j to x. Remember that adding j to x here, we know that x did not have j when we are adding it. So it can be done in O of 1, that addition or adding elements. So this, this loop here takes O of n as well. This here, of course, is O of 1. We are just assigning 0 to, to d of i. Now, this is where the, the interesting work starts here at the while x is not equal to, to in, uh, empty set. We say let k be a node with the minimum value of dk. So here where the heap, min heap, is, comes into the picture, if the elements of x, if the elements of x are stored in a min heap, this element here will take O of 1, right? If I, if I have the nodes in, of, in, in x, represented by a min heap, then the node whose distance is minimum is going to be at the root of the heap and I get that in O of 1. This here, this is O of 1. Then this one here, this operation, I can get it out very, very quickly actually, okay, from there, because if I am, I can remove the, the element uh, from the set, this will be O of log n. Remember that if you have a heap, and you remove an element from the heap, you don't have, this is not like scanning an array. You remove it and in a heap operation to just adjust the heap takes us O of log n. Then this one here, we have to be, uh, you know, I want to look at it carefully here. It says for every neighbor h of k, do something, okay? So I want to look at this just like we, we do with, with another algorithm like BFS, for example. I want to look at this in the context of the while loop. So this, this block here, if we look at it in the context of the while loop, you will see that this is going to iterate this, the, this operation, the if, if dk plus w of kh is smaller than d of h, this is going to be operated total over the running time of the algorithm, this is O of m. Because what does it mean to look at neighbors? It means that we have to visit every edge exactly twice. Not exactly twice, sorry here, because if a node has been already dealt with and it is out of X, we are not gonna be looking at that. But in the worst case, that this number of, of, uh, of operations, if dk smaller than, uh, dk plus w of kh smaller than d of h, this is a total of w, o of m. This with that, with that um, while loop, okay? So not every iteration takes o of m, no, the while x is not equal in uh, empty set for each neighbor h of k, this takes O of m. Now, this one here is going to, there is something implicit, there is something implicit in, in, this, uh, in this operation here, that when I update this d of h, when I do this update here, I have to adjust the heap because these elements are in the heap. Every time I change d of h, I have to go to the heap and change it. Now, how many times can we change this? 
worst case, it's going to be on the order of m times because in the worst case, this value here, d of h, is changing proportional to the number of edges. So this one here, if I don't look at, at the d of h, so I should have actually done this here, this, 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 these two lines, O of m, and this is here, of course, the O of 1 goes inside the O of m. But this one, for each neighbor, h, d, k plus, this one here, this, this is going to take on the order of m log n total. Because every time we update h, we have to go to the to the heap and update the heap. Updating the heap, it's O of log n. But how many times can we update the heap based on this line? In the worst case, it's on the order of m. Okay. So this algorithm, Dijkstra's algorithm, all the way to here, this takes O of n. This part here, worst case, takes O of m log n, worst case. Okay, assuming the graph is connected and all of that, this is going to be O of m log n. This is why the running time of Dijkstra's algorithm, if we assume that the graph is represented as an adjacency list and the set x is represented by a min heap, is O of m log n. This is the running time of Dijkstra. Uh, proving correctness of that is, also, is, uh, is not uh, that hard. Again, you can do the the standard proof technique on greedy algorithms.